Hi guys, welcome back and good to have you here. I am going to be your instructor for this tutorial. In this course, we are going to learn everything you need to get started with Spring Boot. We are going to look into Spring Boot background, install the necessary tools and create our first Spring application. This course is suitable for beginners. However, if you like to learn Spring Boot in depth, you can stick around. Let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to look into Spring Boot background. Spring Boot is an open source Java based framework used to create a microservice. Spring Boot makes it easier for standalone and production ready Spring applications. This tutorial will give you an introduction to Spring Boot and basic concepts. Let's look into microservice as we have mentioned. A microservice is an architecture that allows the developers to develop and deploy services independently. Each service running has its own process and this achieves lightweight model of support business applications. Next, we are going to look into why Spring Boot. All right, the first reason that you should choose Spring Boot is that it provides a flexible way to configure Java Beans, XML configurations, and database transactions so it's easy to configure everything the second reason is that it provides a powerful batch processing and manages rest endpoints okay the third reason is that everything is auto configured the next one is it offers an audition based uh, spring boot application it provides easy dependency management and lastly it includes embedded servlet container. In this tutorial, we are going to install the necessary tools and create our new project. All right, so go to your favorite browser and search for download IntelliJ or IntelliJ, and then go to download. Here you're going to, let me just close this. You're going to be presented by two options, the community-based and ultimate version. I'm going to recommend ultimate because it comes with added advantages in what we are going to do later. So I already have my IntelliJ. Go ahead and click download and follow the process to install your IntelliJ. Next, go to your browser and search for JDK. I recommend that you download JDK 8 or JDK 11 search for jdk 11 jdk 8 or 11 and then go to uh, download on oracle click download and then go the way down you will see different operating systems and download according to your operating system and click download click accept terms and conditions and click download in case it takes you to login you can Come back here and search for JDK8 and go to java.com. From here, you can download a free version. Okay, click Java download. It will ask you to agree and then proceed to download. Okay, so for me, I also have a JDK installed. Next, we are going to install Maven or Gradle. You're going to search Maven install and you can install according to your operating system whether windows or mac for instance if you're going to install for windows then there are steps online which you can follow to install okay the importance of maven or gradle is that it makes it easy for you to build common types of projects example java libraries so we are going to use maven or gradle if you're going to use uh, gradle in your case but for this tutorial we are going to use Maven so it will help us to compile our Java files and run it after completing the installation go ahead and open IntelliJ IDE Air. for me I have IntelliJ IDE Air 2019 the first step is to create a new project it will take you to this window and here we are going to select spring initializer spring initializer it helps you to generate some files which you could do manually but we want it to generate some files for us for for us to get started okay so spring initializer and then select your project SDK this is the uh, JDK that you you downloaded 
So for me, I have uh, JDK 13. I have 11 and 13, but for this project, I'm going to use 13. And then you wanna click next. In this window, we are going to fill in the information of our project. So we are going to start with group. Group here, you can put your company address or your, your company website. But for now, for the example, we can stick with com.example. So it's your website inverted. For the artifacts, we are going to call it Hello World. Okay. And then language is Java. You can choose Kotlin if you're familiar with Kotlin. But for this tutorial, we are going to go with Java. Uh, this is the Java version that your project is going to run on. I'm going to choose 11. Or let's just stick with 8. So that's it. Click next. Okay. It tells me artifacts contain illegal characters. So we are going to change this to lowercase w and then this to hello. Next. Here you're presented with another window to choose dependencies. Let me show you the dependencies uh, that you can choose as you start. But of course, later on, you can choose even more dependencies as you wish. Okay, so for the web, we want to choose Spring Web so that it, it can help us to build our site. And for SQL, we want to choose Spring Data JPA. We are going to talk about JPA later on. And if you know about migration, you can choose Liquibase or Flyway. But I've done a tutorial for Liquibase migration, so you can go and check it on the link above. Here, I'm going to choose um, H2 database. H2 database basically it helps you for the in-memory database. It's not an actual database that you can rely on but it helps you with the in-memory database. Okay we are going to look into that later on as well. Next we are going to pick Spring Actuator. Click next and this is your project name. You can change it if you want but we just want to leave it as it is and this is your location of your project. Okay, click next. Now I can see uh, my dependencies were being resolved. It takes a while, but not, not a problem really. On the left side, uh, you can see the structure of your project. When you click on the root node, then you'll see uh, the source file. It's named SRC. Then we have main and test. Under the main, you can see Java and resources. All right, click Java. And now you can see Hello World application. Now this is the first Java class that is being generated when you create your first project. So let's minimize that. And before we continue, let's take a look at the components of the Spring Boot framework. In this tutorial, we are going to look into the key components of Spring Boot Framework. Okay, we have four components of Spring Boot Framework. Uh, the first one is Spring Boot Starters, all right? Spring Boot Starters is one of the major key features or components of Spring Boot Framework. The main responsibility of Spring Boot Starter is to combine a group of common or related dependencies into a single um, or into single dependencies. For example, if we want to add some stuff into the database, then we need to add database related files such as Java JDBC, which is Java Development Kit, Spring ORM, and Spring Transaction Java files. Next, we are going to look into Spring Boot Auto Configurator. The main responsibility of Spring Boot Auto Configurator is to reduce the Spring configuration. What this means is that Spring Boot comes with configuration that you don't have to do manually. For instance, if we want to declare a Spring MVC application using the Spring Input Output platform, then we need to define a lot of XML configurations, for instance, views, views resolvers, etc. But with Spring Boot framework, then we don't need to define those. Next, we have Spring Boot CLI. Spring Boot CLI simply is a software to run and test Spring Boot applications. Next is Spring Boot Actuator. Spring Boot Actuator component gives many features, but there are two major features that we are going to look into. One, providing management endpoints 
to Spring Boot applications. Two, Spring Boot application metrics. For instance, when we run our Spring Boot application, Spring Boot Actuator actually provides host name as a local host and default port number is 8080. We are going to look into this later. Hey, sorry for interruption, but don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that bell button as well so that you don't miss out any of my tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to create our first Spring Boot application. So as you saw earlier, the Spring Boot application, the annotation in this case, is the entry point of Spring Boot application. This class contains this annotation imported from Spring Boot and also this class should contain the main method. When Spring Boot starts, it will come and look for the main method and then start the whole application. So the add Spring Boot annotation contains auto configuration, component scan and Spring Boot configuration. Next, we are going to look into the POM file or the project object model file. Click on it. Here we can see all the dependencies of this project. This file is an XML file that contains the information about the project and configuration details used by Maven to build the project. So in this case, if you're using Gradle, you're going to see build.gradle file. So that's the file that's going to contain all the configuration of your project. Next, uh, we are going to start creating our project by creating controller under com.example.lowad. Let's go ahead and create a new class. Let's call it hello world controller. Hit enter. So the first thing we want to do is annotate it with at controller, at rest controller, sorry. A controller acts as an interface between the model and the view components. For example, the customer controller will handle all the interactions and inputs from the customer view, say in a website. When the customer is interacting with the customer view, trying to buy something, now um, that view will call the controller and then controller call the model. So the model here corresponds to all data related logic that user works with. But in our case, we don't have a view. So we are going to use Postman as a tool to test our application. Right here, what we want to do is add a package so that our controller rests in a package. It's not a must, but it's a good way to program so that all related classes are in one package. Let's call it controller. We are going to refactor that. Okay, let's go ahead and add another package and call it service. And uh, lastly, we are going to add another package and call it repository. Okay, so under controller, we are going to write our first API endpoint. API endpoint is a set of rules that allow programs to talk to each other. In short, if the website which is trying to access our backend, which is our project in this case, it's trying to communicate to our project and it's going to communicate through our API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Right here, we are going to add a request mapping and give it a common URL. Hello. And now we can write our method, which is going to represent our endpoint. Okay. And call it say hello. So let's return hello world. Close that. And right here, we want to add at get mapping. So in short, we are telling our application to get whatever we want in this project. Okay. So in our case, we don't want to put another URL here. This is the common URL. So if you're writing another method, say hello, goodbye, say goodbye. The same URL used for this method will also be used for this method unless now you specify let me let me just write here 
a comment so that you can understand what I mean. For this one will be HTTPs, HTTP sorry, and then localhost, and then 8080. Remember the this is the default one, uh, but we can change that later if you want to. And then hello. If you want to add another URL here, or rather to extend the URL, then is the say hello for instance then your url will have an extension of say hello okay let's go ahead and try to run our application and see what we get our application is starting you'll wait for it to finish as you can see it's running on port 8080 and the URL should be here as well. So next we are going to our Postman. So if you don't have a Postman application, then just go to your browser, download Postman. So here on Postman, you're going to feed in your URL, localhost, full colon, 8080, stroke, hello. Make sure to choose uh, get is our method is get mapping and then you send and there we go we get the feedback so this is the request and now we are trying to get the response okay so for this for this example we are just going to return a string so next we are going to create our repository this is the interaction with our database so a repository is a mechanism for encapsulating storage, retrieval, and search behavior, which emulates a collection of objects. We are going to create a class. Let's call it hello repository. But now um, we want to save actual data. Probably we can call it user repository, okay? Let's go ahead and annotate it with at repository. So for this annotation, we are telling our application that this is a repository class. So for this class, um, we are going to extend JPA, JPA repository, and set our user and int, okay? We are going to come into this, but first let's create user entity. Under this package, we are going to create another package called entities or models create our class called user and the user here is going to hold user data and we are going to annotate it with at entity uh, which means that this is an entity and jpa will come and check and say well this is an entity create a table for, for this entity called user. We need to write a primary key. Uh, our primary key will be an int, as we have specified here. We can import this from our class. This, there's an error here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this should be an interface. Sorry for that. And then this will go away once we create our ID d and then annotate it with at id so it will know this is the primary key and at the same time this is our id this is our main id that we can use to access our object user and since we don't want to be passing our ids we can just auto generate it okay so if we want to change the name of this table we can annotate it as table and then say user but by default this column will be called user all right so let's go ahead and add other columns for this user so we add the key annotation as at column all right and then we want to add a name okay of type string And another column for age, private int age. And now we want to add 
constructors and getters and setters. So a constructor will, will help us to access our object, which is user, while our getters and setters will be able to get a, a certain column or set a certain column. So I'm going to right click, uh, click generate, and then you can choose constructor, and then again, generate getters and setters. Choose all the values except ID because we, want, we don't want to set ID. All right, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, this is an error because we forgot to write it as integer. Okay, let me set it back so that you, you can see the error. The error is it cannot be primitive type. So we change it to integer, perfect. All right, now we have our object and we have our repository, which will communicate with our database. So we need a logic layer called service, whereby it will be the intermediary between the controller and our repository, okay? So under service, let's go ahead and create a new class. Let's call it user service. All right, sweet. Let's annotate it with add service. At service annotation or at component and annotation, these are one and the same thing, but we want to tell Spring Boot that this is a service specifically. All these uh, annotations means we trying to configure uh, this class to another class. So if we want to access this class from controller, for example, we'll come here and let's say user service, but it's not instantiated. So if you want to instantiate it, since it has got that annotation, we just say um, add auto wire, all right? So immediately when we add this auto wired, we have configured this class with this class, okay? Now we can freely use this class and access our methods from uh, user service, okay? So here we want to create a method to save we can start with saving so we want to say public save user sorry uh, this should return user okay the saved user but since the user is coming from the front end or in our case from postman we want to pass it here user user and call it user user request now we want to create a new user equals to new user and we want to set the values of user so user dot set let's say edge will be user request okay the request from from postman and we say get edge and user dot set name all right user request dot get name all right finally we want to save this to our database so we we call our repository okay for us to call our repository again we need to auto wire it so we say user repository oh it will complain but immediately when we add auto wired oh sweet now we can use user repository and see we can save the user okay i know you're wondering where the save method is coming from but remember we let me just go to this class we extended we extended the JPA repository. So JPA repository comes with inbuilt methods, including save, which is going to save uh, our user to the database automatically, all right? So you, you don't need to create a query or you don't need to create a method for that. But um, it's kind of complaining here. Why? Because we want to return the user, okay? Return this user, the saved user. All right, so we are done there. 
but we want to use this method in our controller so that now we can access it later now instead of get mapping we want to save something so we say post mapping so we want to save user okay and then instead of hello we can change it to user and then for this one we don't have to put anything let's do away with this and here we can say user service don't save user all right but we require user from the front end so we have to pass a parameter here so we just say add parameter or instead of passing a single parameter since we want to pass the whole user we can say at request body okay and our request body will be user sweet now we want to pass our user that we got from the postman pass it into the service now the service will see this as the, as the request and then create a new object of our user and then try to save it in the, into the database all right let's go ahead and run this application and try to test it okay so our application is running so we go to postman change hello to users you can see method not allowed because we are still on get but we should change it to post this will indicate that we are trying to send something into our application so for the body um, you click body go to row click on text and then choose json so this will represent our user so in our user we have id but we don't have to send id okay name and we can say our user is called brick and age is is an int so we don't put quotes say 24 now let's try to send it again see what happens let's check what's happening because it's written in hello world okay so we should change hello world to whatever is being returned here okay so let's say return this we have to change string to user all right let's go ahead and run the application again all right there you go so our application is returning the name and the age so what if we want to return an id plus the name plus the age so we used user here is the response but we need to add a response to separate concerns we leave the user to be our object okay and have a user response okay here we're going to create another package call it response and the last package you're going to call it request okay under request we are going to create our user request okay and our response under an, our response we're going to create user response sweet so in, instead of creating it from scratch uh, let me just go and pick it from models user all right pick all of that paste it there call this response okay and then remove all the annotations because this is not an entity class okay now we can click this one and have it on request i think that's it uh, we don't have to pass id on the request but on the response we need the id now we need to use the user response and user request okay let's go ahead and start with the user request so for the request we go to our controller let's close this okay uh, in our controller we want to receive user request just import that okay uh, let's call this user request all right 
let's pass it here but as you can see it's complaining because initially it was expecting user but now we have user request so let's go ahead and change that all right and here we're going to return user response okay this is returning user but not user response okay so after creating a user and then saving it now we want to return the response we have to create a new response here we can create a variable and call call it saved user and now with the saved user we can create a new response so say user response user response equals to new response and now we are going to feed in our data into the user response so user response dot set age saved user dot get age okay and we do the same for the name ID is not accessible so we have to go to our user and try to add a method for getting the ID okay we want to return an int ID and simply return the ID let's go to the service and try to access the ID now we can access it it's complaining because we have a string here instead of an int primitive type we actually changed the wrong place sorry for that okay so we want to add a setter here go to generate and then go to uh, setter and choose id sweet and now we change this from set name to set id okay and the error goes away now we still have one more thing to do, all right? It's missing return statement. So we want to return now the response that we just created. Make sure it's the response. We have another error. Ah, okay. Because we are trying to return the request. However, we want to return the response, okay? Perfect. Simply, we are going to create a new object, and then save the object, Try to get the object which is saved, create a new response, feed in the response, and now return the response to the user. Now, let's go ahead and try, okay, we have one more error. Yeah, so as you can see, this was user, but we want to return user response. Sweet. Uh, let's remove that. Okay, perfect. Now, we want to uh, try to do the same call, all right? and perfect we can get the name and the age but there's a bit of a problem we we actually wanted an id as well okay so let's go back and check what's happening let's go to our user response this is our id okay so apparently i think we need to have a getter method as well for this to work so let's go ahead and add a getter method all right so i'm going to to choose getter and then id then okay let's go back and try to run this and now we can test it on our postman all right let's try again and wow now we can get id name and age okay let's try to uh, save another person say you want to save person b it's a cool name by the way and with age 34 all right so let's send it again and perfect our next task is to retrieve all the users which are saved in our database. 
All right, we want a list of user response. Get all users. All right, and then we want to return a method. Uh, we want to call a method from user service. And uh, we want to name it call. Uh, sorry, we want to name it get all users. Okay. The method doesn't exist yet, so we are going to create the method. All right, that's perfect. So here, simply we are going to use the repository and say find all. Okay, this is also an inbuilt method, so we don't have to write this method unless we want to specify which users we want from the database. But in our case, we just want all the users which are saved in the database. Instead of returning now here, we want to return the results. All right, yeah, it's gonna complain, so again, we want to convert it into our response, okay? Let's introduce a variable. Let's call it all users. All right. And then we want to convert it into our response. Okay. And we want to say for all users dot pitch, this is only available in Java 8 and above. So if you try to use this uh, for java below 8 it won't be possible okay we want to return each user okay then we want to create uh, we want to create a list response so use our response all right Can call it user response list perfect we can use the list and say dot add all right then the user we don't have the user response here so we create a user response user response equals to new user response all right and we repeat this part here here again now instead of repeating it we can actually create a method okay so command alt m get user response perfect and then we can actually use this all right and then pass our user all right Let's close that. But uh, these the results that we actually need it here. So we don't have to create another variable. All right, perfect. Uh, we have to instantiate this list. You can say equals to array list. Equals to new array list. And then we are good to go. All right, so in short, we want to get all the users we call all the users from the database then for each user we want to convert to a user response and then we add it to the list of user response now as you can guess the user response is the list that we want to return all right so yeah and the error is gone so please run again and now this time around we can see that we have all the users okay go to postman again okay change this to get perfect under get you don't need a body then click send all right since we are using the h2 database we received nothing because we restarted the application. Now we, we need to save some users again. Let's save person A. Person A looks like 30. 
All right. Perfect. Okay, so when we change this to get, hit send, and now we can get a list of our users in the database. All right, that's perfect. Okay, when you go back to our application, as we conclude this tutorial, I just wanted to show you application.properties, okay? As you can see, right now we don't have anything, but in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can connect your application to your database, okay? Right now, we are, we are using the inbuilt database, which is H2, as you can see from the POM file. Let me show you. Okay, that's it for, for this tutorial, guys. Thanks a lot for watching up to the end. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that bell button so that you don't miss out any of my tutorials. Thank you so much.